Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Chris D. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First off, I have to give a quick shout out to Bradford from Halter Ferguson Financial. This man flew to Lathrop and sat there for days to watch the mega packs come out of the factory while he tracked the number in the parking lot. Talk about dedication, I'm not going to steal his thunder, but he did confirm what we talked about a few weeks back that the daily production rate at Lathrop should be in the neighborhood of 12 mega packs per day. And Bradford did say that hopefully sometime in quarter three of this year, some additional equipment will arrive that should allow this factory to actually hit the capacity 40 gigawatt hours per year or 10,000 mega packs. All right, so what do we have here? First of all, we have no idea where this came from or what it actually is. It does seem likely this is a leak of Tesla's Project Highland, the Model 3 refresh. But could it be an older prototype? Is this a base rear wheel drive version? Is this going to be the production version? Or is this just one of Tesla's many prototypes that undergoes multiple iterations before hitting production? We just don't know. This leak unfortunately may have a slight Osborne effect for the next few months until this possibly enters production. Some people were aware of Project Highland and the refresh, but that number will certainly grow from this. And now the word is out that it will indeed look different. It will not just be internal changes. Let's just assume it is the next production version of the Model 3. The two obvious differences are no fog lights and the front bumper is different. I suppose the fog lights could be under this lip somehow or perhaps integrated into the headlights, but with a change like this, you can bet your bottom dollar one of Tesla's main objectives here was to continually drive down costs. Some have suggested this is Tesla driving the Model 3 up market to make room for the next gen $25,000 Tesla, but then you would just encroach on the Model Y and given Tesla's goal of making cars available to as many as possible, that seems unlikely. Even if the Model 3 dropped in price another few thousand dollars, the next gen car is expected to be significantly more affordable. The headlights look like they are not the Matrix style that we've seen in the past, and there's also no Tesla badge on the hood, but this could easily just have been for testing. The tow hook cover cap circle remains, and the ultrasonics remain nowhere to be found. The bugs all over the front of the car suggest they've been doing testing at night without the cover that we've seen in other pictures. I'm not seeing a bumper camera anywhere in this image, but it could easily be hidden from this one angle. Some people are saying the side repeater flowing onto the driver door is confirmation this is real, but it's incredibly hard to see that from this angle. I'd also add this picture may have been taken with a certain lens and angle distortion, so let's try to withhold final judgment and we still have no clue what the rear of this car could look like. If you zoom in on the dash area, again, this could be distortion and nothing, but it seems like the dash is raised slightly toward the steering wheel, but this could just be a cover over the dash and the wheel to keep things hidden. Or could it be an instrument cluster? Maybe, but I would find that an odd decision for Tesla, especially if the goal is to drive down costs. I also like this idea from Matthew DR, definitely not ready to bet on something like this, but he said that perhaps this Project Highland Model 3 will be built on a similar platform to the Tesla Roadster, because if you scroll down, you can definitely see some similarities when it comes to the front bumper and the headlights. I also found this image on Reddit. It looks like the back of the headrest in the Model 3 is also different in very new versions. Just the stitching though, there's less of it. You can kind of see on this older picture that they used to have this stitch line right here. It seems like that has since been removed and Monroe has talked about many manufacturers waste money on stitching, so continual cost cutting. Here we have a proposed update for the city of Dallas in the development code and the summary to propose to require electric vehicle charging infrastructure in all new construction, specifically the Dallas one and two family dwelling code. As we go forward, I think all new businesses, all new construction should start considering having charging as we transition to EVs. It'll just be a way for these businesses to attract more customers. This will be essential, not just for one and two family locations, but especially for multifamily dwellings. 
As most of us know, the lack of public charging infrastructure, the lack of charging options for people that live in apartment site buildings, and the lack of reliability of the infrastructure that exists, mostly non-Tesla superchargers, is a big hurdle for EV adoption. So any proposals like this for one in Dallas or any big city will definitely help to move the needle. Let's say one day Ashley and I decide to go visit Giga Shanghai and while we're there we want to use YouTube or Facebook. Ordinarily of course we would not be able to, or can we? There is actually hope with a virtual private network like Surfshark. Yes, they're the sponsor of this video, but let's talk about some features you may not be familiar with. How about the no logs policy? This just means that not even Surfshark has access to any of your online activity. I'll tell you right now, this one is not an industry standard. You can have one Surfshark account for an unlimited number of devices. So if you have a big family, they can all be protected. So let's say we're in Berlin, but while we're there, we actually want the internet to look and feel like we're in America. So we can just type it in and choose from any one of these locations. Click and in a matter of seconds, the internet is now just like we're at home in the States. It's honestly super affordable. Go check the rates for yourself. Surfshark.deals slash electrified also linked below to get 83% off and three months free. They also have a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk to try it for yourself. Thanks in advance if you choose to support the channel in this way. Here we have some data from Row Motion for March. This company is basically like benchmark mineral intelligence, providing insight into the sustainable energy economy. In March, 7.6 gigawatt hours or 7,600 megawatt hours of new grid capacity entered operation across 85 locations, up 124% year over year. For some reason, they compared it to February of last year. Listen to this though. In March, China dominated with over 90, 90% of new capacity. Where is Tesla building its next mega pack factory? China. Two huge things to remember. One, the mega pack deployments are going to be very lumpy month over month because there's a long process for these actually to enter operation, getting connected to the grid, etc. So just know month by month, it's going to be up and down and that's fine. And this also means that for Tesla mega pack sales to actually hit Tesla's financials, again, there will most likely be a lag from the actual production because of how these contracts are structured. More on that though in the future. Looking at the top five projects in terms of size so far this year, they are all in China. Just real quick from yesterday's video, that 6,900 number for Tesla weekly insurance was actually confirmed by the CNEV post, so we're off to a very strong start. In case you missed yesterday's video, here's the most recent week and compared to week one of quarter one. There is a 26.7 thousand square foot building being built in Chattanooga, Tennessee that is set to be leased to Tesla for a new showroom and service center set to be opened later this year. This would be Tesla's fourth location in Tennessee. This sentiment shared by Stephen Mark Ryan is one that I aggressively agree with and have for some time. Everything you need to know about Tesla as an investment opportunity is present. It's just a matter of making the time and doing the research. To which Elon said, buy when others panic, sell when they're irrationally exuberant. There are plenty of people today that are saying they wish they bought Tesla stock 10 years ago and the story will be exactly the same another 10 years from now. Zeker just launched a compact SUV for the Chinese market really to take on the Model Y. Just to give you some background, so far this year in terms of Zeker deliveries, for Q1 they're sitting right around 15,000. Zeker did say it's not just for the Chinese market, but for Western Europe as well. No details on that. Starting price of 27.6 thousand US dollars should have facial recognition to unlock the car and optional in-vehicle refrigerator. Deliveries are set to start in June and they're aiming for 40,000 this year. Zeker has no current plans to sell their EVs direct to the United States. So far, Zeker has two models for sale, the 001 and the 009. The Zeker X is said to have a 66 kilowatt hour battery pack, getting about 348 miles of EPA estimated range. For reference, the Model Y in China starts at about $38,000 and gets 338 miles of range. In fairness, this car is a little smaller than a Model Y and there are still questions about the software and charging, things of that nature, but the aesthetics and the early specs look 
pretty good. We actually reported on this a few months back, but it looks like it's still moving forward. This Italian company, Enel, is set to install a major amount of charging infrastructure in North America throughout the next decade. We're talking 10,000 fast chargers just in the United States and then overall 2 million total across North America. They did say most of that new gear would come from selling at home chargers, but if they do add that 10,000 public fast charger number, that would basically double the DC fast charging number that exists currently outside of Tesla superchargers. Be on the lookout for stalls looking like this. Genesis just unveiled their Genesis Home program. Essentially, they're going to have set energy advisors to work with customers to build out tailor fitted solutions for their homes when it comes to integrated energy production and storage. It's really just composed of three things, solar, battery storage, and EV charging. So honestly, it's a great idea. I'm a big fan. But if you read the fine print, here's what differentiates Tesla from the rest. Just know, in the years ahead, you'll see many companies trying to implement things that Tesla is doing, but this will be the difference. Genesis Home is all going to be manufactured and offered by third parties, which means they'll be giving up a portion of the profits that Tesla will be keeping because they've taken the time to develop the Powerwall, the inverter, the Tesla solar roof, the home charger, etc. I can honestly already see it now. All of these analysts out there saying, look at all these other companies offering the exact same thing Tesla is offering. It's not true. And that doesn't even touch on the software and the app and the customer experience, which is a huge deal, obviously. So just remember all of those things. We have BYD set to launch the Dolphin hatchback in Europe before the end of this year, starting for $33,000. Basically a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. <sighs> just kidding. This will be the cheapest BYD model in Europe, and it will join the Addo 3, the Han, and the Tong. It'll be key to watch these BYD sales throughout Europe the rest of the year to see how a Chinese brand is received. The growth numbers will most likely be very high because they're coming from a low base of 4,000 units all of last year. Don't forget, check out Surfshark links below. Save some money when you book your hotels this summer. You can find me on Twitter at DylanLumis22. Hope you have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.